Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria. I'm pleased to be joined this morning uh, by City Council Member Raul Campillo, who represents Mission Valley on the San Diego City Council. Uh, our colleagues, uh, Council Member Stephen Whipper, a champion on homelessness issues uh, at City Hall. Michael Hopkins, uh, the leader of Jewish Family Services of San Diego. Uh, yeah, right. I'll take, give, Michael deserves that. He's hardworking. <laughs> you got one fan. I'll join the club too. I'll pay my dues. How about that? Uh, I am a fan as well, so you have good taste, sir. Uh, Leslie Lewis and uh, Muriel uh, Rab Rabinowitz Bussell, uh, who are co-founders of the Homelessness Hub at UC San Diego. You give it up for UC San Diego. Um, Hafsa Keika, who's the director of the city's Department of Homelessness Strategies and Solutions. Uh, and a special welcome, welcome uh, to Tom Cummings and Leslie Monks, uh, who are clients here at our Safe Parking uh, Lot program. And Michael will tell you a bit more about them. I uh, hope Leslie uh, gets in something about the, about the cats. Uh, we, are, we were commiserating over cats and donuts. This is a good morning for the mayor. Um, so we're here in Mission Valley this morning to announce that we've expanded access uh, to this safe parking lot to 24 hours a day. This means that this program can uh, be open more often and serve more people who would not previously been able to use it because of the time limits. Uh, pre, uh, the hours, uh, expanded hours started last Tuesday, September the 6th. Uh, I want to state right at the start, without question, homelessness is the city's current greatest challenge uh, and it's a humanitarian crisis that is afflicting communities up and down California and across this nation. I want to reiterate that last point. I get to go later this week to the U.S. Conference of Mayors uh, con convening in Florida. I can guarantee you this will be the subject that every mayor of coastal and inland, red and blue, uh, uh, urban and rural communities will talk about. It is absolutely everywhere. But what we're doing is individual and different, and I'd want to think that San Diego is leading in many regards, and I think this announcement today is one of those. Addressing this particular problem is my number one priority, and here's how we're doing it. Shelter outreach, which leads to shelter, I'm sorry, street outreach that leads to shelter, that leads to housing. That is our recipe for success. We have expanded our outreach programs and our shelter capacity to build more permanent supportive housing, and we're finding every way possible to break down barriers that stand between people and getting housing. One of the ways we're doing that is by allowing folks who are forced by circumstance to live out of their vehicles to be parked in this lot at any time, day or night. The city's safe parking program is operated under a contract with Jewish Family Service and includes three facilities, two in Kearney Mesa and this one right here in Mission Valley. The safe parking program has served nearly 2,250 households since it started in 2018 and is roughly 700 households to date have been connected directly from this program to permanent housing, shelter, or family reunification. Now, previously, all of these lots were open from 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. every day. But requiring people to leave at 7 a.m. in the morning and come back at 6 p.m. at night makes it impossible for some folks to be able to take advantage of this important program, whether it's due to a work schedule, family obligations, whatever it may be. Think about your own schedule. No one has the same schedule as someone else. The flexibility that today's announcement provides is a game changer for making sure more folks can take advantage of the program and the services that are offered here. We've learned that opening at least one of these lots to 24 hours a day will make the program more effective because it'll give people more safe places to stay. So earlier this year, I asked the city council to continue this program through June of 2023 and to prove an additional $440,000 to allow us to extend the hours at this site. And because they understand just how effective safe parking pr program is, uh, the council enthusiastically said yes. Uh, and now we can get more people to take advantage of this site and they are also provided with the array of critical services that help get clients from their cars into housing, which has made this program so successful. Uh, with those introductory comments, it gives me pleasure to introduce my friend and the representative for Mission Valley, City Council Member Raul Campillo. Council Member. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor Gloria. Good morning, everyone. My name is Raul Campillo. Welcome to Mission Valley, District 7, which I represent at the City Council. Uh, this is our safe parking lot, which will be operating 24 hours a day, thanks to the hard work of Jewish Family Service and my colleagues in the City Council and the Mayor for realizing that this is a key solution to helping those who have a vehicle and need a place to stay overnight. That is the key detail here. We haven't had that uh, or throughout the day, excuse me. We haven't had the ability for people to stay throughout the day so that people have to move around, have to spend gas, have to find a new place. It's key that people have a safe spot. 24 hours a day, and that's what we're delivering today. 
I've seen firsthand how impactful the Safe Parking Program is in addressing the needs of our unsheltered individuals and families, and I'm proud to have that lot right here in District 7, right here in Mission Valley. Expanding this site program to 24 hours a day and seven days a week means that San Diegans who have practically no choice, and in fact, no choice, but to live out of their vehicle while they try to make ends meet and try to find a way to permanent shelter, they can have that greater access to the safe environment and these essential resources. And I've been a long, a strong supporter of the Safe Parking Program and I'm proud that we were to make that motion to expand these services in June of this year. Now, just a couple months later, here we are, we're able to expand those hours in this parking lot to serve more San Diegans and ensure that they have that safe place and those resources. And I will continue to advocate for more funding to increase the number of lots that we have here in the city and expand our services and connect people to permanent shelter. I truly appreciate the friendship and commitment of Mayor Gloria to increase funding and to help more San Diegans transition to that permanent housing. We know that this is not the permanent solution. This is the interim stopping point for those to get to permanent housing. I want to also thank Jewish Family Service. As I said before, they work so hard to collect the data, put together, uh, put forward workable solutions, and put the resources to their maximum use. They do such a good job and are such an asset for our entire region. They help so many families come together and find a way for unhoused folks to find that permanent shelter. Food and restrooms, a Wi-Fi internet connection, the security presence, education, and the connection to broader services are just some of the ways that Jewish Family Service helps so many individuals, and they are excellent coordinators across multiple facilities that they serve so that individuals can be served at the right location for that individual. They do it per the individual, per the person, and that's exactly the type of service that we need to help those who are unsheltered. Likewise, the Jewish Family Service staff has pointed out numerous ways, big and small, that we at the city can support these efforts. Whether it's fixing a light bulb, whether it's uh, you know uh, cutting back hedges to make more room for cars, or perhaps even helping them connect to sewer lines and electrical infrastructure so that they can have more robust sanitation facilities. These are key aspects that oftentimes go overlooked. Jewish Family Service does not overlook any aspect of it, and that's why they're such great partners for us. And we have many ways we can make this better, and I look forward to doing far more into the future. I've also spoken to our firefighters who are our neighbors here at Fire Station 45, and they say that Jewish Family Service and the neighbors who park here overnight and now will be parking here throughout the day are very good neighbors to be here. They take care of themselves, they clean up, they make sure that they're uh, doing their part so that we are all working together to make this safe and clean and productive. I also want to thank Hafsa Keka and her team at the Homelessness and Housing Solutions Department. It's been a, a dramatic change since she's been brought on at the city. And uh, all, all these solutions run through her office and she promotes them, makes sure we find the right partners and she's doing an excellent job. The bottom line is this, we all know this, too many San Diegans have nowhere to live but their cars. And for their safety and well-being, these parking lots are necessary. The success rate, the success rate, let me say that one more time, the success rate of connecting individuals who are living out of their cars to the resources they need to get to permanent housing is far superior to many programs. The reason for that is they have a safe place to, to, to be, to sleep, and because of that safety, that safety, that sense of security, that is the key point. People who feel safe and secure are able to get to those services, able to work, work hard, and many of the people who are sleeping here overnight have jobs. Our students are providing for themselves, but because housing is so expensive in, in the city and county of San Diego, this is their option. That's unacceptable, and I know the mayor, council member Whitburn, and everyone here is going to work to continue to make sure that housing is affordable so that no one has to live in their car. Thank you so much, Mayor Gloria, for your partnership on this. Thank you for looking to me and saying, where can we do this? I'm proud that we have this in District 7. My constituents up the hill in Sarah Mesa, throughout Mission Valley, over in Navajo and Ally Gardens know that this is successful, and they are happy to see us doing it. So thank you for turning to Mission Valley and District 7 to be that partner. And now I want to introduce uh, my friend on the council, a person who wakes up, goes to bed, walks every single block in downtown, and understands the problem better than practically everybody here about how to help our unsheltered neighbors and solve homelessness in the county and city of San Diego, my friend, Council Member Stephen Whipper. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Stephen Whitburn, uh, the city council member for District 3, which includes downtown and Balboa Park and all of the wonderful, vibrant neighborhoods around it. It is always good to be here with our mayor and my colleague, 
Councilmember Campillo and other community leaders who are working to make our city better. Let me also thank each of you from the news media for being here this morning. And I hope that you have noticed how many news stories you've covered just in the past week, announcing more and more steps being taken to address homelessness in our city. The opening of the new 150 bed shelter in the Midway area, plans to use a portion of the old downtown central library as a shelter. And today, the expansion of the safe parking program where we are this morning. As the council member for a part of the city that is impacted by homelessness, I want to thank Mayor Gloria for the unprecedented series of steps our city is taking to get people back into housing. Of course, we need a robust response to homelessness because another big story that you have reported is that San Diego has become the least affordable housing market in the nation when it comes to the amount of people's income that they spend on rent. For many people, that means an uncomfortably tight budget. But for others, it is completely unworkable, and they lose their homes and they live in their cars like the people here at this location. The Safe Parking Program is an important part of the city's efforts to help people back on their feet, and I am a strong supporter of it. Without safe parking lots like this, many people living in their cars would instead be living in encampments on our sidewalks. I had the pleasure of speaking to some of the patrons of this facility before the news conference this morning, and they told me what a godsend this facility has been to them. I encourage all people living in their cars to take advantage of this program and the safety that it provides and the services that it offers. And I want to thank Jewish Family Service for their stewardship of three of the city's safe parking lot locations, including this one. Jewish Family Service contributes to our San Diego community in many, many ways. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce the CEO of JFS, my friend, Michael Hopkins. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Gloria. Council members Whitburn and Campio, um, thank you very much for the support of this program and the critical expansion. Um, every night for the past five years, Jewish Family Service has operated the City of San Diego Safe Parking Program for unsheltered individuals who are living in their vehicles, people often experiencing homelessness for the very first time. The Safe Parking Program provides a safe and meaningful place for folks to, to stay um, and as we help them stabilize their lives and transition back into more permanent housing. Most of these individuals and families have some source of income and need just a, a little assistance to get back on their feet and into a home. Um, they are people of all faiths, backgrounds, and ages. Some are seniors living on fixed incomes. Um, others are parents who've lost maybe multiple, one of their multiple jobs. And sometimes it's college students who can't afford a place to live any longer. Our safe parking program supports people where they are now and provides the tools and resources to create a pathway to more stable housing. The program is just one of JFS's interventions to prevent what is often a downward spiral for those experiencing homelessness, many who eventually find themselves on our streets. Our first safe parking program was located at the Joan and Irwin Jacobs campus at JFS. Um, and together over the past few years, we've expanded to three other locations, including this one in Mission Valley that accommodates RVs. Um, now, as we've expanded, um, offering 24 services here in Mission Valley, I want to acknowledge the research study um, done by our partners at UC San Diego, which recommended this critical tactic um, to, to support the folks that we serve. I'm thrilled that we have the leaders of UC San Diego here, and you'll hear more about the research that they've conducted. Uh, we are grateful for the mayor and city council for expanding this program to 24-7, um, which has already made a substantial difference to folks within our program. Um, you're going to, uh, today, I'm going to talk about two individuals, Thomas Cumming and Leslie Monks, who are uh, here. Um, in June of 2022, um, this couple was set to exit our program. They were, they were just about ready to leave. Um, they purchased a, a truck and a camper trailer uh, to go see their children. Um, after visiting their children, they were um, focused on transitioning into affordable housing. Um, then shortly after that, uh, Thomas re received an unfortunate cancer diagnosis. Um, the couple had to change their plans and are now being accommodated here in this parking lot. The new 24-hour format allows Thomas to rest in an RV during the day between treatments. If this site was not open 24 hours, Thomas and Leslie would not have a safe place to go. Um, I want to thank you. For, uh, so in sharing that story, I'm, I'm reminded, right, that we're all often one event away from something that really throws a wrench into our lives and our, our plans for the future. 
Um, this is just one story of many. Um, in addition to the critical support of the mayor and city council, um, this work would not be possible without our dedicated staff that are here. I don't know where they're hiding, uh, but they were here this morning, yes. Um, our volunteers, yeah. And the generous funding from so many donors in San Diego um, and the San Diego Women's Foundation. Uh, we look forward to working with the mayor and city council on expanding other lots and uh, more facilities in our city. Um, with that, I get to introduce Dr. Leslie Lewis. Um, Leslie is from UC San Diego and will share some of the research. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, yes, my name is Leslie Lewis and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Urban Studies and Planning at UC San Diego. And I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Muriel rabinowitz Bissell. Um, and we, along with uh, graduate and undergraduate students, uh, are finishing up a three-year evaluation of the JFS Safe Parking Program. Um, and you know that's a it's a it's what's called a mixed me method study. So analyzing quantitative data and a lot of qualitative data. So a lot of conversations with people, uh, almost 180 oral history interviews, uh, about 70 follow-up interviews, listening sessions, and that research has really yielded a great insight about a number of things. One, the the diversity and the humanity of people who are using these lots, the individuals and families, and uh, Michael shared one story. We hear so many stories and our students in particular are struck by how, quote, like us these people are. Um, we learned about the, you know, their, their life trajectories, what are sort of some of the proximate and the long, you know, upstream causes of, of their homelessness crisis, and what are their day-to-day -day challenges in living unhoused in San Diego, and also their ideas about what helps and what would, what would aid them, what additionally would aid them so that they can get rehoused. And something that came up repeatedly across all the lots, but particularly this lot, was the need for a lot to be open 24-7. Um, you know, uh, people having to get up and leave by, you know, by 7 a.m. before often work or school starts or libraries are open or, or stores, having to uh, commit very limited uh, funds from very limited income to, to gas. Um, is a significant strain on people. And so we're, we're very grateful to the City Council, to Mayor Gloria, and to JFS for expanding the Mission Valley lot um, because it will really make a difference uh, to San Diegans that are currently living in their, their vehicles. It really means that you know a critical, safe, and stabilizing space is available to people all day. They have access to uh, meeting their basic needs, to case management services, and also to uh, a sense of community that often arises, we have found, um, and so this is really critical. And we hope that, um, you know, in our sort of collective continuing effort to address homelessness and its root causes in this, in this region, that we can replicate some of these, this, this collaboration between uh, researchers at local universities and uh, nonprofits providing uh, services and uh, policymakers so that we can learn from our interventions and, and use those lessons going forward as we sort of work together to, you know, to, to have a region that uh, no longer has unhoused uh, neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie, and appreciate the research you bring to this work. We always are interested in making sure we get the best possible outcomes, more folks housed, uh, and you're certainly your research uh, and, and information is helpful in that cause. Let me just wrap up uh, with just expressions of appreciation uh, to the folks uh, who are here today, in particular the folks who are allowing us into your space. This is your home. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be here today to share this news. My hope is in sharing this news, a couple things happen. Maybe a few folks who are like you, who need a little bit of help, find this program that they wouldn't know otherwise and can find their way to this program, hopefully on a path to housing. It's also my sincere hope that folks see this and say, this looks like a lot of parking lots. I'd rather have folks parked here than maybe in our parks or our beaches, our bays, or in front of my home, something else like that. And maybe I should support one of these in my own neighborhood. Um, I appreciate the media being here to help us explain this to, to folks about precisely who is here. And chatting with Leslie and some of the other folks who are here, it's a reminder that, but for the grace of God, go I, right? That all of us are a paycheck or two away from being able to be in a situation like this. One bad cataclysmic event, a divorce, a job loss, a medical diagnosis, any number of reasons folks can find their way here. You know, as mayor of this city, I'm often uh, on the receiving end of folks' frustration about homelessness. I'm frustrated too. But what I know about our people of San Diego is that we're a compassionate people. And then when given the opportunity to support programs that are proven to work, they will do it. And that's exemplified by these two council members, and in particular this community of Mission Valley, uh, that is willing to accept this program. You know, other council members and other communities may not be as accepting of this, but it's our hope that while we show that this functions well in a community, integrates well, improves quality of life, that more of these can be done. 
and you have my ironclad commitment to continue to work to provide more resources and solutions like this one. You heard uh, Councilmember uh, Whitburn talk about the number of uh, announcements just this week. I'll point out that later today, we have the opportunity to advance a proposal that would create over 2,000 new affordable homes right here in San Diego. That's just on one particular project. We're doing absolutely everything we can from taking old shuttered city facilities and repurposing them as homeless shelters and transitional housing uh, to expanding our, our outreach programs, making sure that every single day of the week, every single council district has a trained individual going out and contacting homeless individuals and offering them services. Uh, and I thank Hafsa for the work that she does. I thank JFS for being that work. You know, it's easy for me to stand behind this podium and say this stuff. You have to have people who are willing to go do this work. JFS does that work and they do it exceptionally well. So let me just conclude by saying more of this, right? More outreach, more shelter, more homes that people can actually afford. This is not easy. We didn't get into this mess overnight and we're not gonna get out of it overnight. But I, as long as I'm the mayor of this city, I will do absolutely everything I can to take a lot like this owned by the city that was only being used half time and say, no, not good enough, more. And we, now we're here today to say 24 hours a day. I believe in the number of months ahead, we will find additional lots like this that we can put to use in exactly the same fashion to help change the lives of more people. We'll continue to find whatever city facility is not working well. Front of mind is the Central Library that's been shuttered for nearly 10 years. Right now, today, we could go down there and you're gonna see a bunch of folks sleeping around the outside. Wouldn't it be better to invite them to sleep indoors where it's safe, where it's warm, where they have access to running water and bathrooms? I don't think that's too much to ask, and that's exactly what we're going to do. But let me conclude by saying the solution to homelessness is housing. Housing, housing, housing. And I hear from a lot of folks, they don't like homelessness in the community, but they also don't want new homes in their neighborhood. That is not consistent, and that is a solution. For, that, is a, that is not a solution. That is the status quo. We will be building more homes in communities all across the city because it's not just the homeless that are dealing with this. It is teachers and firefighters and nurses and grocery store clerks, absolutely everyone is being squeezed by this housing crisis. And what you all have reported in terms of rent increases, think about how many of those rent increases are translating directly into more people living in their cars with nowhere else to go. So we will continue to build more homes that people can actually afford, maybe as early as today, get a vote on something that would deliver, again, thousands of homes on one piece of property. The frustration is understandable, but the solutions are real and my persistence will not abide. I will continue to do this work to make sure that we're addressing this issue in a way that it matches the compassion of San Diegans, but with the urgency that they experience, that they expect because they're so frustrated. And again, I'll end with simply saying appreciation to all the residents who are here. Take some courage to accept the services, to be willing to say, yeah, you know, I need a hand. Um, I want to acknowledge that. I want to thank you for it. And I hope that the example that you all provide by being here and helping to get on a path to housing uh, is inspirational to other folks who may not be there yet, um, but through your example, will give them the strength to say yes, come forward and get housed. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you again to the residents for allowing us to come into your home today. I wish you all the very best success as you work your way back into housing. You absolutely deserve it. You are San Diegans too, and I'm your mayor and I'm proud to be your mayor. Thank you guys.